Right. Well, it's, um, it's an extraordinary time for us. Um, uh, I think it's fair to say um, that my, my people, my, my country, the population of my country, uh, we love Her Majesty the Queen. Um, and um, so every opportunity to, to, to celebrate um, her, her reign and her life is great, uh, is great for us. But this is much more than that. It's uh, as, as the 70th anniversary of her coming to the throne. So she's um, our longest serving monarch ever. Um, uh, and I was just thinking about this. There are, there are few people who are younger than my mother who can even remember Britain with a different monarch. It, uh, you know, she, she describes um, you know, the, the, our, um, uh, our, our history and our development from, if you think about it, in 1952, the UK was a very different kind of country, seven years after the end of the Second World War, still with a, uh, a remarkably large empire. And the transition from that to being a democratic, well, we always were democratic, but a modern, uh, a modern uh, country, an equal member of the United Nations with all of the other 200 countries. It's been a big transition. Um, and she has overseen all of this with, in, with her very subtle guidance and influence on our country. And I think most people see that and realize the very positive uh, influence she has had. You know, she's, she's, um, she has welcomed 14 prime ministers during her reign and met each one of them every Tuesday um, for an hour, no notes, nobody else there. Um, and you can imagine how much of her wisdom has been shared during that time. So it really, uh, it, it really matters. Um, the other thing, and the other reason why it's such a, um, a special celebration, I think, um, is that people feel as if they have a connection with Her Majesty and the royal family. Um, you know, during her reign, she um, has uh, attended over 20 thousand official functions um, and some of these functions involve thousands even tens of thousands of people and the number of people um, who have come into contact with her and feel some kind of personal connection is, is very very large and for that reason many people feel really quite personally um, keen to, to, to celebrate this moment you know and even even in her 97th year she is still working very hard and she received the uh, credentials from my great friend and colleague, uh, Hakim Hajui, His Majesty's Ambassador in London a couple of months ago. Um, and, um, uh, and he was over, overjoyed uh, at, at that opportunity. Um, so um, uh, it, it, is, um, it is an opportunity to mark something literally unique. I mean, this is a this is a celebration, really, for um, for Britain um, and um, Her Majesty's other 14 realms, um, because of course she is the Queen of many other countries as well. And and so, I don't think it has a direct impact on our foreign policy per se. But what I do think is is that um, in other monarchies, and particularly I feel it here in Morocco, there is a there's a genuine affection and, and attachment to Her Majesty the Queen as a result of the fact that we share this royal tradition. You know, I, and if I could put it this way, I think maybe only um, the, the, the citizens of another kingdom really appreciate the value uh, of Her Majesty in the same way that British people really, under, uh, really appreciate the role of His Majesty uh, King Mohammed VI uh, in, in Morocco. There is something special and intrinsic about being um, uh, a monarchy. And so I think that, that there is a particular interest um, um, in Morocco uh, about uh, Her Majesty's Jubilee. Um, and I'm hoping that we'll be able to share some of the images of our celebration of Her Majesty's birthday here at the embassy this evening um, to show just how we, uh, we are honoring Her Majesty. Um, we are, of course, theming it around the Platinum Jubilee um, with the colors of the Jubilee. Um, but also we're celebrating um, these uh, special connections between Morocco and the UK. Mm. Well, 
We are, uh, of course, always working on this from a, a government to government level. Um, we, we have enjoyed some uh, spectacular visits in both directions. Uh, um, certainly one would go back to the visit of Her Majesty the Queen here as a state visitor in 1980. And I am lucky enough to benefit from one of the results of that in the form of the beautiful jacaranda tree in the garden of my residence, which uh, was planted by Her Majesty during that visit. Um, and of course, His Majesty the late uh, King Hassan II visited uh, the UK on a state visit seven years later. Um, and there's, there's, we'll be seeing some images of these visits uh, tonight. It's a, it's, a, it's a very special memory. And of course, that's continued uh, um, since then. And we've had uh, some uh, spectacular visits by the Prince of Wales and Prince Harry here in recent years uh, and other visits in the other direction. And so the answer to your question is we will continue um, with this tradition. Of course, everything has been suspended during, uh, uh, during the, the lockdowns of, uh, of COVID. And as we start to get back to normality in all aspects of our lives, we look forward to further uh, such uh, royal exchanges as well. Um, but also, you know, we, we, there are many uh, royal foundations, royal uh, uh, organizations that are, that are supported um, by our two um, royal families. Um, and I would hope uh, over time to see uh, greater interaction um, between, uh, between those as well, which again shows that something that is just a little bit different and special in the relationship between two kingdoms. Mm. I think it's, it's, it, it's great. Um, uh, it it, it provides the, the Morocco Now um, campaign. Um, does exactly what um, um, has exactly, I think, what is needed uh, in such a, an initiative, in that it brings the different elements of government uh, that, that need to be supported in promoting um, uh, Morocco economically as both a trading and an investment partner, together with the private sector. Um, and the interaction I see between uh, the Minister for Investment and Convergence, the Ministry of Investment and Convergence of Public Policies, um, as well as the Ministry of uh, Commerce and Industry and the private sector is, is it feels to me, really synergistic. Um, and, um, and so, uh, uh, having launched um, this brand uh, for the first time in an overseas market in London, which was a source of great pride to me, um, we're already seeing um, a lot more um, uh, recognition um, among British companies of the, of the potential here, and also of Moroccan companies, seeing, seeing how the, the, the trading and investment environment in the UK is, is coming back after COVID, but also um, how the, uh, the relationship between our two countries can change to our mutual benefit um, under our association agreement. Um, and so there's a great deal to achieve there. Um, and we've got the commitment on the part of both government and, and business on both sides. So really, as far as I'm concerned, the sky is the limit.